Hey guys, we're going to get started in just a second. Give everybody just a few more minutes to jump on board if they're coming in today. I got a great class planned for us today. And um, yeah, I'm really, really, really excited. It's a lot of a lot of similar stuff that we've been doing all along. But remember that frequency is really important in movement training. Frequency, frequency, frequency. Training throughout the day and not just trying to get all your nutrition in one meal is very important. So whatever whatever we're doing, we're doing a lot of it like every week because we want to get that frequency aspect. So we really want to build that. Okay, guys. So it looks like we're hitting the nine o'clock mark. We're going to go ahead and get started. So um, today, the theme of today's class is breathe some life into it. So while you're sitting there right now listening to the sound of my voice, I want you to turn your attention into a deep breathing if you'd like. So just turn your attention in towards your breathing and observe your breath. If you're holding any tension in your body, no matter what position you're in, I want to ask that you let go of the tension and only allow as much tension as that it's, that's necessary to basically keep you upright. Okay? And throughout our movement session today, we're going to be breathing life into the body. Okay, so um, even in the, the, the biblical story of, 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 of Adam and Eve, when Adam was made, God just threw some dirt together and then he breathed life into his nostrils and then he became a living being. So when we have injuries and issues in our body, one of the, one of, one of the important uh, techniques for recovery is to breathe into it. So no matter what your issue is, no matter what your deal is, uh, physiologically, physically, make sure that you're breathing some life into it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to ask that you just start by laying on your back. We're going to lay on the ground. Go ahead and close my attendee box here. Let's just go ahead and lay on the ground. And once you're on the ground, I want I want to invite you to just place your hands on your abdomen. And remember, this is where serotonin is made. Ninety-five percent of your serotonin, which is a feel-good hormone, is created right here. So if you want to feel good, make it a habit of massaging your abdomen. And whenever I lay down, I like to uh, put some specific pressure pressing into my abdomen at, at different angles. And then what that does is you can actually adjust your spine um, almost like a like a chiropractic adjustment. The only difference is, is that you're not doing a ballistic movement. You're just simply applying some gentle pressure. And uh, massaging your spine from the front is very, very important. Very, very important factor. Okay. So you're just gonna massage on the abdomen. And remember, always return your attention back into your breathing. So while I'm pressing in, I notice that sometimes my breath becomes a little shallow or less, less in the stomach. So uh, remember, you want to relax into the areas that you're pressing. Sometimes you're pressing on stuff in your stomach that kind of uh, feels uncomfortable. And so when you feel that discomfort, your body's natural instinct is to kind of brace itself um, to protect itself from more discomfort. So but 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 logically that doesn't make much sense because there's no threat, there's no bear in the room, there's there's, there's no issue that we need to, to protect ourselves from. So this so we're making a habit of letting go. And even while we're massaging, and especially while we're massaging, we want to make sure that you're letting go as often as you can. Keep on doing that for a minute. I need to get my timer. 
I stay on track with my time. Okay, so from here, what we're going to do is you're going to simply take your hand and lay it across the opposite side neck and stroke down the neck through the sternum into the stomach and then switch sides. So I'm just taking my full palm, my neck rotates to the side, I glide through the neck and through the sternum and into my stomach. So this is for your immune system and your lymphatic system. This is to mitigate inflammatory responses in the body. So as you're gliding over the left side of your neck and your left clavicle, I want you to be aware that that's where your lymph dumps back into the heart. So the lymph is the um, fluid that's in a continuous state of being cleansed through the lymph node. And when we're healing from inflammation, whether it's from a trauma or from a surgery or from a food disease, the lymphatic system plays a big role in cleaning your body up. So I just stroke it through your neck and you keep doing it while I'm talking. You couldn't do it too much, really. Um, just be aware that um, this is a powerful technique. Seems very minimal, seems like no big deal, but in the realm of massage, this is a very, very powerful technique to practice. So the lymph system is very, very uh, important for the inflammatory response. And as I mentioned, it's also very important for the immune system, keeping your body healthy and strong. So I want you to imagine your body vibrant, healthy, and strong. And imagine your body is, is literally has these cells called phagocytes that eat. They literally engulf bacteria and other stuff that shouldn't be in your body, and they eat it. It's crazy. And those cells live in your lymph node. So now from here, take one arm above your head and place your hand in your armpit. Now this is where a lot of those lymph nodes live. And the lymph nodes need to be pumped. And the way that we pump them is through uh, breathing, musculoskeletal movement, and also massage. So you can do the other side, massaging into the armpit, And then from here, you can also take it into the hip. So in the, in the uh, what we call the inguinal area, which is if you feel the bone on the front of your hip, this is your um, hip bone. And then you feel the bone right in the center. This is your pubic bone. And in between that, those two bones is a ligament. And we want to massage over that ligament. And that's going to, there's a string of lymph nodes that are the size of olives, huge lymph nodes in this area right here. So as you massage over it, um, you're helping to stimulate the flow and the, uh, the productivity of those lymph nodes. Okay. So a little bit more of this, you can do both sides at the same time. You can do a combination of all the above, stroking through the neck, stroking through the armpit. Kind of like you're giving yourself a, it's kind of like when you take a shower, right? Like where are the areas you need to clean most are the cracks and the crevices. The places where we have complex geometry physically, that's where we need to spend a lot of attention. Same thing's true when you're doing self-care massage. You want to make sure you're spending a lot of time addressing the creases and the, and, and the areas where the sun don't shine. Okay? So like for you dudes, um, I know Ivan's there. I'm not sure if Tim's on today. But uh, for dudes and, and, and for women as well, making sure you're massaging up into the area uh, underneath the genitals uh, is very, very important because that's the place that um, a lot of things can accumulate, especially because we wear tight underwear. We don't touch that area. We often, there's a lot, there's a lot that can go on. You guys get the point. Okay. So. We're going to begin our movement. I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start out with some long rolls today. I know you guys love the rolling variations. So what you're going to do is you're going to lay on your back. 
And then take your arms above your head and just reach the arm across the body. Breathe in. As you exhale, roll all the way onto your abdomen. Once you get to your abdomen, I want you to rock your hips side to side. Just relax the low back. If you feel any tension there, you can play around with popping yourself up a little bit or even just lifting your chest off the ground with your back muscles. But if you feel it in your low back, I want you to lower down a little bit until you don't feel that anymore. From here, you're going to reach the arm behind and go back onto your backside, switching to the other side. So again, you're just reaching your arm across the body. Reach, 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 slow down. You can get out of your stomach, roll around. You can even kind of just move a little bit in your environment. And use the ground to massage the front sides of the hips especially. That's the area that becomes really short and tight when we sit a lot. So let's go back to our back side by reaching, switch sides, reach, roll, rock, breathe. So while we're moving, you know, one of the things that we want to develop is efficiency. So keep rolling as I talk to you. And one of the ways that you can become more efficient in how you move is to breathe through the movement. Because remember, whenever we feel any amount of discomfort, the body's natural reaction is to kind of hold the breath and to stabilize the muscles like the transverse abdominals. So let's come back to our back side. All right, so from here, we're going to move into our rocking variation. So we're going to bend both knees, feet flat on the ground. Okay, I want you to draw your belly button towards your spine first because that contracts the transverse abdominus, which is the only muscle that, that, that has fibers that go um, perpendicular to pretty much everything else. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to bring our knees towards our chest, and we're just going to start to rock forward and back. Now, if you already feel a little bit of discomfort, or perhaps because you have an old back injury or whatever it is, first of all, I want to remind you that your body is much stronger and much more capable of healing than you ever give it credit for. Well, what you can do is you can pop yourself up to an upright seated position, which gives you kind of a moment to, to breathe and relax. And then from here, you're going to round the back and then rock back and then forward again. So you're just rocking forward and back. Now, if you want to get more abdominal exercise out of this, what you can do is you can use your arms in the ground and then lower yourself nice and slow, straightening up your legs a little bit. So you'll notice that you'll get a little bit more work when you slow down the movement. So I'm up here, and then I'm going to slowly lower myself down. So again, you want to make sure that no matter what I say, no matter what encouragement I give, Make sure that you keep this whole process to work for you. I'll give you the, the um, idea or the goal or the objective of the movement we're doing, and then you can see if you make it work for you. Okay, so from here, we're going to go to some get up variation. So the first one we're going to do is we're just going to sit up, is our bare rug pose, and you're going to have a posted arm there. You're going to put your weight into that arm and then bring the leg back, come to a standing position. Okay, take a few steps, walk around, take it up, and then you're going to lower your hands to the ground slowly and mindfully. And then lower yourself down. Now we're going to do the same thing as in the other side. So again, I'm putting all my weight into my arm, but my shoulder is depressed like this. And it's also retracted. So I press through, come to standing, take a few steps, and make sure your steps are smooth, like a ninja, like very suave, you know, suave. So I don't, I don't know if suave is a word. In any case, lower yourself down, and then bring yourself right back up. Okay, lower yourself down. And you can do this in whatever way you want. Keep in mind, guys, that your ability to get up and down off the ground is directly correlated with how long you're going to live. So your ease of movement when it comes to getting up and down off the ground, like if you can get up without 
using your hands, this is ideal. I, they've done some research, and apparently, um, the more supports you need to count on to get yourself standing, I guess like every for every support, it's like five or ten years off of your life or something like that. I don't know. Not trying to plant negative seeds or suggestions, but the idea is to practice getting up and down. That's the main point. All right, so let's go back to our rolling variations. This time we'll leave with the legs. So I'm laying on the back, and I'm going to reach the leg across the body. Now, if you feel tightness in the hip, remember, breathe into it. Roll onto your stomach, rack it a little bit from side to side. From here, squeeze your glute, bend the knee, then reach it up into the air. We're contracting the muscles in sequence to maximize the benefit and the effect. Let's go ahead and reach across the other leg. Roll, rock. Okay, so we're relaxed on our stomach. Now contract your glutes first, bend the knee, reach it across, and come across. So the contraction, go ahead and keep going while I'm talking. Um, the contraction in the glutes helps to stabilize and protect the back. So I'm going to contract the glutes, which are the biggest muscles in the body, and then I'm going to bend the knee, lift that leg across, so my glutes are really lifting that leg up into the air. And then helping me to get back onto my back side, to the side. Rock it up, nice and easy. Okay, and then again, take yourself through the sequence. Squeeze the glute, bend the knee, lift it up, go to your back side. Okay, one more time, the other side. Rock it out, squeeze the glute, bend the knee, lift the leg up. Come back to your back side. Okay, so moving into our rocking variations again. So this time, what we're going to do is we're going to straighten one leg and one leg is bent. We're going to come up and we're going to grab the ground with that front leg and pull ourselves upright. And then lower yourself back down. Let's switch sides. So I have one leg bent with my foot close to my butt, and I come up, and then what I do is, I want to bring myself forward by pulling, pulling with this front leg. So I'm pulling myself forward to this upright position. My spine is long, so play around with kind of bringing yourself a little bit higher. Imagine there's some tall grass that you want to kind of see over what's going on, who's around here, and then lower yourself down. You can use your hands for support, Go back to your rocking, to your sides. So feel that relationship between your leg bone and your hip. So one of the things you can do is put one hand on your knee and one hand on your hip and just bring, bring the, the, the knee forward and back. And just feel that relationship of the hip inside the hip joint. Lower yourself down to the side. I come up, are my hands ready to do whatever I need to do? Perhaps I need to help somebody over here, grab their hand. You know, maybe uh, I'm in the garden and I need to, although I don't think I'll be rolling around in my garden, to be honest with you. You guys get the idea. The more you can add imagination to your process, the better. And the more you can make your movements real, the better. Okay, so from here, we're going to do the same thing. So we can keep rocking. This time, we're just going to stand up. So let's rock. I got one leg a little bit further out. I'm going to pivot this back leg and then just come to standing. Walk it out. A little bit of walk in my environment. Okay, lower yourself down slowly with control. If you can do it without using your arms, fantastic. And again, you can use whatever variation you want. Let's say you want it to be more intense. Try rocking back and standing without using your hands. It's coming right up. When you lower yourself back down, make sure your spine is neutral and you're really sitting your weight back through the heels, through the glutes. Coming up, standing, 
taking a few steps. Perhaps you want to practice some of your break falls so you can slap one arm to the ground, press yourself up. Again, make the variations that you need to make in order to make the movement more comfortable or more productive for you. Nice and easy. You can do a fall, a break fall using both arms. So I can come straight back. And you want to have as many options for every movement that you possibly can. So just having many ways of doing the same exact thing. So from rocking to standing. Okay. Let's go back to our rolling one last time. We're going to start with our end position, which is hands or knees and elbows together. I know this is your favorite. We're going to extend through the arms and legs, roll to the side, onto the stomach, all the way back onto your back, and crunch it together. Okay? So extend, roll, and crunch. You got a big area, roll again. Roll and crunch. Roll and crunch. This is an amazing exercise for all of your abdominal muscles. So your internal, external, oblique, your rectus, transverse, all the different tissues that help to create a stable midsection are active and strengthened through this movement. Nice and strong. Nice and easy. Woo! I wish I would have worn a tank top today. I thought it was going to be more chilly. Hey, so you just heard me thump my elbow on the ground. You don't want to do that. You want to try to be as smooth and as slow as you possibly can while you go. And notice how the ground massages every part that makes contact with it. So when I'm on my stomach, it's massaging my abdominal muscles, on my side, my abdominal muscles. And this is a great way to get your tissues warmed up and ready for more movement. Okay, so let's come uh, to an upright position. Actually, we're gonna go back onto our back and we're gonna mobilize our hips. So on your back, what I want you to do is you're going to take one leg up into the air and then with the other leg bent, you're just going to bring the ankle across. Okay, let's try that again. So straighten and bring it across. Straighten, bring it across. Now when you straighten your leg up into the air, make sure your abdominal muscles are contracted. And the reason why is because you want to stabilize the spine as you're mobilizing some of these uh, bigger muscles and bigger bones in the body. Okay, straighten up, lower down, two sides. So straighten that leg, toes towards the nose. You can add some rotation here as well. And bring it across. Straighten it, bring it across. Straighten it, bring it across. Straighten, bring it across. Straighten it out, bring it across. Straighten it out, bring it across. Good, so from here, all you're gonna do is you're going to straighten one leg and keep one leg bent, and you're just gonna bring the knee across for a long body stretch and then bring it back and switch sides. So I'm just bringing the leg across for a long body stretch, feeling the stretch through the arm, through the lateral rib cage, and breathing, especially when I'm in this end position. Okay? All right, so from here, I'm gonna mobilize my spine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my spine through all the motions. So the first motion is flexion. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna draw your belly button towards your spine and you're gonna look towards your feet. This is flexion. Lower yourself down. And now I want you to bring your spine into a lateral flex position. One direction, 
and then the other. You can use your arms to kind of encourage the movement. Now we're going to do rotation, starting with the neck. Just rotate your neck to the side. And then if you want, you can also rotate the rest of your body, but keep your hips on the ground. And then the other side. And then the other side. So this is rotation. Okay. From here, come on to your side. We'll do the same thing. Flex the spine to bring your knees towards your chest. This one, we can do extension. So you're just going to bend your knees towards the back side. That's it. So this is a little bit of extension. You can squeeze through the glutes, glutes, the glutes. <laughs> Isn't that a character from a movie? In any case, contract through the glutes. And then we can also do lateral flexion. So you can bring your head up towards the air. And this is lateral flexion. Let's switch sides. So I'm going to move like this just so you can still, still see me. So there's flexion, there's extension, there's lateral flexion. So that's all movements of the spine. Okay. On our belly, same thing. We have extension, lateral flexion, and lateral flexion. So the idea, guys, is just to focus on mobilization. Okay. This whole movement series is just for mobilization. All right, finally, we have the shoulder joint. So starting on your side, watching your monitor, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your arm out in front, take the thumb towards the ceiling, and bring it up towards the ceiling, and lower it towards the ground. Notice how that stretches the front of the chest. And then move the arm around in that position of stretch. So you should be feeling a nice gentle stretch through the pack. Okay, so you can always add a massage to any of the movements that we're doing. So while I'm stretching through the, through the chest, I'm actually feeling to, to explore and discover what fibers are actually elongating with this movement. Okay, and then from here, I'm just going to go ahead and switch sides. So you can roll on the other side if you like. Again, I'm bringing the arm forward first. Thumb towards the ceiling, and then I'm going to reach behind. Now, my knees are bent. Now, my ears could be bent or straight, however you like. But what we're doing is we're just stretching through the front of the shoulder. Stretching through the front of the shoulder. Real nice, gentle, and easy. Okay, exploring those movements, bringing the shoulder into that position that it isn't normally in. Normally we're on the computer or riding the, the bike or, or uh, in the car and the arms are in front of the body. So now we're, we're practicing bringing the arm behind the body. Nice and strong, nice and easy. Okay, from here, we're gonna come to a seated position and we're gonna mobilize our hips from a seated position. So all you're gonna do is you're going to go into an inverted crawl, lift the butt off the ground. I want you to drop your knee towards the middle, and then bring the knee, that same knee, out. Okay, switch sides. So I just drop the knee towards the middle, and then drop the knee out to the side. Now you can play around with where um, your feet are located. So I can walk my feet out a little bit for this one. And just notice how it kind of changes the effect. Remember to breathe through the whole process. Perhaps I want to try my feet a little bit closer. Same thing. I can get a different angle, a different benefit by changing the position and also the speed. You don't want to be too fast or too slow. You want to have that Goldilocks speed, Goldilocks pressure, just, just right. Not too much, just right. So just keep mobilizing the hips. If this is kind of sketchy on the wrists, you can take the wrist out of it and just mobilize the hip with the arms in the air. And now you got yourself an abdominal exercise simultaneously. So I'm mobilizing that hip, exploring the sensations, and the slower you go, the better. Because you really want to see what's going on inside the body and start developing that relationship within your body. Okay. So from here, 
I'm going to come into a quadruped position and we're going to do some spinal articulation. Okay, so we're on our hands and knees. This is quadruped. And all we're going to do is we're going to start with some cat and cat. You drop your sternum towards the ground and then lift the mid back towards the ceiling. If you're already wanting to add to this, you can shift your body weight forward and back. So my pelvis comes down towards the floor. I can take my knees off the ground, get some nice extension through the spine, breathing into the whole back. Because especially if you've had any back pain, sometimes the tendency is to really stay locked in certain parts of our spine. So we're just sending a nice wave of movement through that whole spine. So I'm lifting the mid back up and then bringing it back. You want to keep the knees off the ground. This is a fantastic way. This is actually for me my kind of my favorite way to do this particular movement is to make sure that because what happens is is when I take the knees off the ground, I'm making a connection all the way down to my feet. If my knees are on the ground and I'm doing it like this, it tends to be, the, the movement tends to stop at the knee. But if I take the knees off the ground, now I can start to get a full body mobilization. Okay? Um, from here, we can also add a little lateral flexion so you can look back towards the feet, side to side. And then, a little bit of all of the above. A little bit of flexion, extension, lateral flexion, just soften out any tension that lives in the spine. Okay, from here, we're going to focus our attention, same position, focus on the shoulders now. So, your shoulders, in order to get into a good position, you want the pits of your elbows facing forward. So, not in, but forward. And then from here, we're going to practice a rhomboid push up. So we're just, this is to help to create stability in the shoulder. If you have a history of any shoulder injuries or anything, this is to help us to, to, to develop the ability to control our scapula through shoulder movement. So what we can also do is drop your weight back over your heels into a child's pose and do the same scapular movement. So the arm, the elbow staying straight, but I can pull my scapula down the back side of my rib cage, contracting my lats, contracting um, my rhomboids, and getting some good mobility here, which is really, really important. From here, lift the palms off the ground and just add some gentle mobilization through the spine and the shoulder simultaneously. These two joints, actually, the hip, shoulders, and uh, spine are all very intimately connected. So we're just adding some nice, gentle movements to mobilize the shoulder and spine. Okay, so from here, one last one we're going to do is you're going to put most of your weight into one arm, and you're simply going to rotate or move your body around that central point. So this is putting the pressure inside the shoulder joint, and when I'm doing this, I'm, I'm greasing. I'm, it's like spraying WD-40 inside your, inside your shoulder. Let's switch sides. Nice and slow and strong. Okay. Now we're going to keep this position for, uh, to continue our mobiliz mobilizations for the hip. So we're going to keep this movement going, but now I want your attention to go into the hips. As you bring your body weight forward, back, side, and back to forward, I want you to bring your mind inside the hip. So you're exploring those movements. Now, if you need to go very, very slow to keep it safe, please feel free to do that. Speed is very important when it comes to any movement that we do, and you, you want to be able to do a wide range of speed when we're practicing our movement. Okay, so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to come to tall kneeling. So just press yourself up into tall kneeling. And you're going to put all your weight into one leg and go ahead and step out with the other and then bring your hips forward. Come back to your starting position, contract your glute on that back leg, and then bring yourself forward. Notice 
how it kind of uh, decreases your range of motion, but it increases stability. Sometimes we, um, we let go of some of our stability on account of mobility and vice versa. So let's step out with the other leg, same thing, contract the glute of that back leg and just kind of move it forward and back. So we're moving in and out of different positions that we want our, bit, our body to be able to do relatively effortlessly and without thinking about it. Okay, so from here, we're going to do our last spinal mobilization from tall kneeling. So what you're going to do is you're going to come from tall kneeling, you're going to curl your chin towards your chest and round the back. From here, if you want, you can actually lower your, your uh, hips to your feet. And then what you can do is you're going to come into extension, stacking one vertebrae on top of the other. So let's just do that a few times. Forward and back. You can either round the back and come down, or you can hinge forward at the hips. And then as you come back up, round first. Whatever your preference is, is fine. The idea is we're mobilizing through the spine, letting go of tension, and softening some of those hypertonic muscles, those muscles that are, that are kind of excessively tight. You can move your body weight forward and back, just notice how that feels. Send a gentle wave of movement through the spine. Sometimes it's helpful to put your hands on your ribs so you can feel that movement happening. I like to imagine, like, you know, if I'm not playing good music, I like to imagine a good beat in my head. Because every time you dance, it's a, it's, it's one of the best movements you could ever do because there's, the, each movement is, is full of a feeling. And it's a positive feeling, right? Like you're feeling the vibe, you know? And that's very, very important. You can add some, some gentle movements in any direction that you like. Okay, so from here, um, we're going to add our shoulder mobilization. So we're in the same position. Now all we're going to do is we're going to reach one hand over our head and press our glutes off of our heels and just reach through the shoulder. Let's go ahead and switch sides. So I'm just slowly placing my hand on the ground and reaching across. Come back out of it. Reach across. And back out of it. This time, let's add rotation. So I'm going to reach across my body and behind. So I'm like looking around, looking around, and doing it all the time. Switch side. Reach. And down. And add whatever variation you want to add to it. Side to side, nice and easy. So wherever you feel it most, try to breathe into that area and also to distribute the movement a little more evenly. So for example, there's times where I feel it like right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna breathe into that, but I'm also gonna back out of the movement just a little bit so I can distribute the sensations a little more evenly. Our body works as a whole, and we, we spend too much time trying to isolate what we wanna to try to uh, strengthen, which is you know the old school workout of back and buys, chest and tries, and all this kind of stuff. There's nothing wrong with that, it's just, I'm coming at it from a connected tissue perspective. Okay, lower your butt to the ground. Let's get into a side bend sit. From side bend sit, we're gonna do our hip swivel. So you can either take your arms off the ground or place them behind you and swivel your knees from side to side. I like to go right to the hands off version. So no matter which version you choose, make sure that you're breathing while you go. Nice and slow, nice and easy. Now when you come to the upright position, you want to see if you can get both hips kind of close to the ground. 
a lot of times, you know, one hits way up in the air and you want to try to get them both down. One of the things that can help with this um, is to add whew, a weight and then to take that weight in the direction that we want our hip to go down. This is for the sticks and stones class, but in any case, you get the idea. So keep twiddling. Side to side. Side to side. Now remember, you can take your legs a little bit further out. In fact, if you want, you can take your legs far out to the side and take the hips over just like this. In fact, I would encourage you to try this just to notice how it feels. Feel, feel pretty good to get another variation of the movement. And remember, you want to breathe. I want to breathe life into the parts of my body that have agreed to be tight. The mind said, contract. The body said, okay. But it's not always um, productive. So from here, we're going to move into some crawling variations. We're going to start with a butt scoot. I bet you can see that in your mind without me even telling you. So all I'm going to do is I'm, I'm bringing my feet in front, then my hands, lifting my butt up, lowering down. Now I'm going to go backward. Scoot my butt back, bring my hands back, bring my feet back. So you're just going forward and back, just scooting around. Now see if you can do this with as little effort as possible. Breathing as you go. You'll notice that it, it, it shouldn't be too difficult on any one part of your body. If it is, make your adjustment. So for example, let's say your wrists feel kind of sketchy as you're pressing into your palms. Try to distribute your weight throughout your whole hand and not just this part of your wrist. Make sure the weight of your body is going through all your fingers. And really press your fingers into the ground. Another variation would be to go to a loose fit. Now, if you're tired of scooting your butt around the floor, you can take it to an inverted crawl. And the last thing we're going to do for this particular movement is we're going to lift opposite arm, opposite leg. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Nice and easy, nice and strong. Make sure that your shoulders are in a good position. You want to use isometric contraction whenever you can, which is move, which is contraction without movement, and that helps to encourage stability in your joints. Okay, so from here, we're going to come to standing and practice a little balancing. So however you get there is your business. What we're going to do is we're going to place one hand on top of our head. And this is going to help to turn on all of your cranial nerves. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take my other hand and bring my foot to the front, to the back, to the side, and to the front. Which side? And now I got my other hand here. Front, back, Side and front. Okay, switch. Front, back, side, and front. Breathe while you go. Switch. Front, back, side, front. Okay. Switch. Front, back, side, front. Lift it up. Front, back, side, front. Switch. Front, back, side, front. One more time, other side. Front, back, Side and run. Woo! A lot of hard work happening here, but not really. <laughs> Lower yourself back to the ground. This time we're going into side bend sit and we're going to do some kick outs. So take the back leg off the ground, kick it towards the front, 
switch legs, and we'll bring that leg to the back. Okay? So as you're doing this movement, you want to make sure that you're long through the spine and breathing through the whole process. Reach, reach. And if you want to add a reach at any time during our side bend sit, feel free. So as I'm coming down, I can reach. If you want to imagine kicking with this back leg, boom, bringing it to the front. Boom. Yeah. Or check this one out. So I'm here. I can also boom, kick to the back. Woo. Dragon finds its target. Dragon whips his tail. <laughs> Great Bruce Lee movie, movie if you haven't seen it. Should I forget what's going on my name? Anyways, can't go wrong with Bruce Lee. So. And again, make it playful, make it fun. Take the hands out of it if you like. Add some spinal movement as you go. Boom, boom. Add sound effects. Boom, boom. Whatever you like. Nice and easy, nice and strong. Boom, boom. Okay. From here, back into inverted crawl. This time we're going to do tripod transitions, everybody's favorite. So, what you're going to do is lift opposite arm, opposite leg. I want the leg that's in the air to come under the body. So, in between the posted leg and the posted arm. So, it comes under. Now I'm in quadruped. Come right back out of it. Shoulder pulse. One, two, come back. Boom. I'm out of it. Shoulder pulse, one, two, come out of it. Now let's do the other direction. I'm just going to change it. So come into the other, the other leg now, other arm and leg. Remember, the leg that's in the air comes under the body. Now I'm in my ready position, and when I come back here, I can get my nice shoulder pulse. Okay, so I'm in this position. I can crawl around a little bit. I can come standing. We'll work right back down. Come forward. And get myself back to my starting position. Okay. So again, opposite arm, opposite leg. The straight leg comes underneath. Okay. Make sure that your wrists are feeling good. If at any time they feel sketchy, come into a squat. Roll them out a little bit. Make sure they feel nice and strong. Okay, when you're ready, lower yourself back down. And it's all about fluidity of motion and being able to get yourself down to the ground and up off the ground safely and efficiently. Okay, so since we're already standing, let's go back to some balance. So this time what we're gonna do is we're going to Peel one foot off the ground and then flex the knee in front. From here, I'm going to kick it out to the side very slowly. Now, if you can only go this high, that's great. If you can go way higher than this, great. Now, take it to the back. And just notice how that feels. If you have issues with balance, you can either hold on to something. Or you can look at a spot six feet in front of the body. Bring the leg back out to the side. Flex the hip in front, lower it down, switch sides. So I flex the knee, flex the hip. Kick out to the side. Bring the foot to the back. Feeling nice and stable. You want to spread the toes on the supporting leg. You can feel free to either point the toes or press through the heel of the leg that's in the air. Bring the leg back out to the side. Bend the knee in front, lower it down, switch sides. So from this bend knee here, kicking through the heel on the side, and then bringing that leg towards the back. So this is a glute exercise. You should be able to put your hand on your glute and feel that it's contracting. 
Bring that leg side, front, switch sides one more time. Bend the knee, kick out to the side, bring it to the back, and then to the side and the front. Awesome. Okay, let's lower ourselves one more time down to the ground, guys. Side bend to the position, please. So from our side bend sit position, what we're going to do is we're going to do our kickouts to start. So we'll start with our kickouts. And while we're doing kickouts, we're just going to make sure that we add our reaches. So you're going to take both hands and reach in front of your body. Now you can go down as low as you want. You'll notice that the further you go down, it's like, oh, it's total effort. If it's too much, bend the elbows. If that's still too much, take the hands behind you and you'll notice you'll be able to go all the way down to your front leg pretty much. So kick the knee out and then use whatever variation you want. So it's like a combination of hip strengthening and uh, back muscle strengthening. Nice and easy, nice and strong. Nice and strong. Every time, nice and strong. No matter what movement you're doing, make sure that you're nice and strong. And even if you're holding contraction for stability, make sure that you can breathe into it. So you should be able to breathe into a contracted abdomen. Kick, kick, low, lower yourself down, reach, reach, bring it up, kick it up, reach, reach. Okay guys, last round of crawling. This time you're going to start your quadruped on hands and knees, okay? From hands and knees, take the inches, one, uh, the inches, take the knees one inch off the ground. And what you're going to do is you're going to lift opposite arm, opposite leg, and reach. Switch. Reach. I want you to only move as fast as you feel comfortable, but make sure that you're stable through your supporting arm, through your supporting leg, and your belly button is drawn towards your spine. So if somebody took a whipple bat and smacked you in the abdomen right now, you should be like, you should shatter that bat. Okay, and reach. Reach. Okay, nice and slow, but nice and strong. You wanna add a tripod transition and do some reaches that way, feel free. Make it as smooth as you want. And last but not least, from our quadruped position, we're going to reach the leg behind and over and come into inverted crawl. Come out of that and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So from quadruped, you reach the leg up and over and let the weight of the leg pull you back towards the ground. And then reverse out of that. One more time, each side. Reach. Reach. Actually, let's just keep that going for a little bit longer because this is really, really good. It's really, really helpful for creating strength in this position. So again, take your time. Reaching through the leg. And don't bring the hand off the ground until you absolutely have to. Make your movements as large as possible. Reach that leg up and over. Find the ground. And then continue bringing your body weight the rest of the way. Reach. And reach. Okay, guys. Lower your caboose down to the ground. 
We're going to move and do some restoration through stretching and breathing. So lower yourself all the way down to the ground, nice and slow, nice and strong. And what we're going to do is we're going to reach our arms above our head, and our legs are going to move in the opposite direction. Spend a few moments here, three breath cycles, just relaxing unnecessary tension. I want to ask that you get in tune with the power of your spine. The spine is one of the most powerful structures in the body, but because we don't, we're not taught that, and we're not how, taught how to cultivate that, it does in fact lose some of that strength. But the good news is, is that it has this amazing resilience and ability to become strong again. So just relax your spine, visualize strength in your spine, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take one leg up into the air and take it across the body. Lower the leg or the foot towards the ground. You can't even see that. Take the foot towards the ground. And you're focusing on a long stretch through the whole body. So while you're here, breathe and relax. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, let's get started. So again, I'm just reaching my leg across my body. And I'm feeling a nice stretch through the outside of my body. Now, if this feels sketchy or in any way, just modify your position. Perhaps you need to bend your knee a little bit. And then you change the stretch into more of a posterior hip stretch, but that's okay. As we as we work towards the end of our movement session today, we want to start to use movements that follow a feel-good principle. In other words, your size, you want your movements to feel good. So breathe and relax. You can start to add a little bit of knee flexion. You just notice how that changes the effect of the movement. Let's roll back onto our back side, switch legs, bring your leg across, bend the knee, straighten, bend, straighten. Okay, guys, let's roll onto our abdomen. So, on your stomach, what you're going to do is you're going to post up on your elbows, on your forearms, rather. Okay, so from this position, what you're going to do is, you're going to take one arm across, and you're going to take the other hand, leading with the thumb, and reach behind. Now again, if this feels sketchy anywhere, I want you to breathe relaxation into that spot. We have a lot of uh, we waver in our faith with regard to how great our body was made or how, how great it can heal. When we feel discomfort, we're like, oh my gosh, what was that? You know, and instead, we, it's very important to tune into what your body's able to do and to breathe life into the areas that need more energy. Let's come down and switch sides. Now, if in this position you feel it in your low back, I want you to lower your chest down to the ground a little bit further. And again, reach across with one arm, and then leading with the thumb, you're going to come behind. And this is very good for offsetting some of the effects of sitting at a desk, typing, driving in a car, and all the other movements we do where our shoulders are flexed towards the front. I'm just adding some gentle mobility here, just opening through the chest, and then go ahead and come back down. This time, what we're going to do is, you're going to have your arm at about shoulder height. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to reach my opposite leg behind my body, and I'm getting a stretch in the front side of my chest. So this is a pec stretch. Okay, so I'm just gently reaching behind with the opposite leg, and this hand that's on the ground, this is where I'm getting my stretch. So breathe in, and breathe out. 
You can also press gently into the uh, chest that you're stretching and hold that contraction for five, four, three, two, one, and then as you exhale, you can actually take that arm into a deeper stretch. Okay, slowly come back down. Let's switch sides. So again, I got one arm at shoulder height. And then I take the other leg behind. And then now I got myself a nice gentle stretch. If I want to straighten out that arm, I can do that. I can kind of crawl my fingers, reaching out to the side, and that'll stretch the whole arm line. Breathe into this position, guys. Okay, if it feels sketchy on any joint, but even in your knee, go ahead and straighten it out. And make your modification so that it feels good. Okay, slowly come out of that. From here, we're going to take our hands down by our rib cage. You're going to squeeze your belly button towards your spine. Squeeze your heels together and your glutes. You're going to press yourself into a cobra pose. And you can point your toes if you like as well. And we're just going to rotate the neck around. If you want to add a little bit of external rotation in the femur, which basically means like I'm, I can take this knee up to the side, that's good as well. And just feeling strength through extension. Now again, visualize your spine, healthy, strong, adaptable. Really, really good. From here, drop the weight back over the heels, child pose, please. Nice and easy. Oh, this is a glorious stretch on that low back. You can switch your, uh, kind of bring your weight from side to side. Nice and strong, nice and easy. Breathe into your low back. Nice and slow, nice and strong. One more full breath cycle here. Okay, guys. Let's come to a seated position, please, on our on our rears, on our butt. Nice cross-legged position here. Length through the spine. I want you to bring your belly button forward and your, your ribs are going to stay down in front. So the belly button comes forward, but the ribs stay down and the chin is slightly tucked. The shoulders are wide. And while you're in this position, I want you to breathe 360 degrees around that rib cage, right? So those lower ribs, I want them moving on the front, sides, and in the back like a barrel. You want to take in and draw the air into the body. You want to you want to expand your body. We spend a lot of time in our culture trying to shrink ourselves both both energetically but also like I want my abs to look a certain way so I'm always holding certain tension. You also want to get into the habit of of practicing expansion. Because the expansion creates a vacuum which draws air, aka life, into the body. Let's go ahead and add some gentle movements of our neck. So roll the one ear to one shoulder, chin towards the chest, ear to the other shoulder, and then switch, go the other way. Add the breath work, right? So as I breathe in, I'm in one position, and then as I exhale, I'm going to move around. Okay, let's add a little rotation. Soften those neck muscles with your mind, with your imagination. Good. Okay, from here, take a breath, float the arms out to the side and close the ceiling. 
Palms come together as you exhale, drop them down, heart center. Quiet the mind. And breath cycle here, please. And one more time, let's breathe in. Floating the arms off the side. Above the head, palms come together as you exhale, drop them down, heart center. I think one more, right? Yeah, one more. Float the arms out to the side, breathe in. Palms come together, exhale, float them down, heart center. Drop the shoulders away from the ears. Notice how you can stay upright by letting go of any unnecessary tension. And we got that. That's our end point. I hope you guys enjoyed that movement session today. I know I certainly did. And if you have any comments, complaints, or criticisms, go ahead and put them in the box. Um, and I just want to thank um, each and every one of you for being here today and for sharing time with me. Um, I really, really look forward to these sessions. And I really look forward to the fact that I, I like to imagine you guys were moving with me, even though we're not in the same room, uh, we're still moving together. Um, just in our lo physical location is different. <laughs> you like that suave? I think I had um, overalls back in the day from Juton. They sprayed uh, suave on the butt of my overalls. Uh, airbrush, you know what I'm saying? Suave. I think I still have them. I know, sounds lame, but it was. Ah, lymphatic massage is nice, right on. Oh, the Rona. <laughs> that's right, exactly. Slick, that's right, slick overalls, that's what it was. But yeah, guys, you know, keep up with, with the lymphatic massage because we, we, we need to keep ourselves strong, keep ourselves healthy, and knowing where to address the body in addition to where to keep our mind is important for the process. I'm going to find those overalls, Ivan, by the way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring them out. Move of the day, those dragon kicks. I knew you would like those dragon kicks, and I imagine your awesome laugh, Ivan, by the way, every time I do something that I think you might laugh at. <laughs> I bet you just did it right there too. Um, but yeah, I those those are a lot of fun. I I I, uh, I found those kind of on accident, but um, it's just through practice, right? You just you just grow from your practice. <laughs> yeah, right on, brother, right on. Uh, and thank you again so much for for um, for um, for for donating and supporting the work. I really really appreciate it, man. Um, uh, these classes are really difficult to charge for because I'm at my house and and, and it's a little different than when I'm in person, but um, I it, it it really helps out a lot. Um, this is this is how I'm trying to make a living, and, and so all the support really really helps. Yeah, right on, brother. I appreciate you too, man. Really. Um, if you guys have any questions or or, or comments, uh, you can email them to me. Um, otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you guys same time, same channel next Saturday. So I hope you guys will be there. Okay? Okay, guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign out. Thanks, brother. You have a good weekend too, man. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys soon, okay? Peace.